with the signatures of the leadership of the Alliance Partners, I hereby formally and officially declare the Alliance for Revolutionary Change duly launched. Keep watching Magical GH. Yes, 
Excellencies, members of the diplomatic corps, Nime, Name, our revered clergy, distinguished invited guests, friends from the media, fellow countrymen and women. Let me start first by expressing my profound gratitude to you all for accepting our invitation to be part of this important function. I give thanks to the Almighty God for making this day possible. I wish to also express my sincere appreciation to the leadership of the Alliance for Revolutionary Change for their dedication throughout the deliberations leading to the establishment of the Alliance. I would also like to thank them for the trust and confidence reposed in me in unanimously endorsing my candidature to contest as the presidential candidate of the Alliance in the upcoming general elections. <laughs> Fellow countrymen and women, we are gathered here today for a very simple but historic event, which marks a watershed moment in the political history of our country. The historical significance of this event does not lie simply in the coming together of different political entities. Indeed, we have had alliances and coalitions of political groups at different times in our political history. The significance of today's event lies in the fact that we are initiating a process that will redefine the architecture of political governance in our country. This process, by the grace of God, will lead to the election of the first independent candidate as President of the Republic. It will also lead to the establishment of the first truly representative government in Ghana's history. A government of national unity which will be made up of representatives from different political parties, the business community, labor unions, civil society, professional bodies, faith-based organizations, traditional authorities, and other interest groups, including traders, farmers, fishermen, artisans, among others. The service ladies and gentlemen, never before in the history of our country has there been a more compelling case for change and transformation in all spheres of our national life, political, social, and economic. This is what revolutionary change is all about and has informed our choice of the name of this alliance. After 67 years of independence, we are still grappling with the fundamental challenges of development. An economy in crisis, an extraordinarily high level of unemployment, a declining health care delivery system, an educational system that does not respond to our current and future development needs. The rampant and irresponsible exploitation of our natural resources and the deplorable state of infrastructure, including but not limited to road and rail networks, energy, water, and sanitation. We certainly deserve better than this as a people. But, but the challenge, but the challenge for us is how do we fix this? 
fellow countrymen and women, to overcome our challenges, I propose the following six fundamental considerations. One, ushering in a new type of leadership in Ghana. Leadership that is visionary, competent, accountable, transparent, action-oriented, resource-driven, and compassionate. A leadership, a leadership that will fight corruption ruthlessly and lead by example and not provide a safe haven for corrupt political appointees and other public officials. Two, implementing transformational policies. Governance is about policy making and execution. What Ghana needs now are transformational policies in all sectors, namely in the macroeconomy, in the productive sectors, including industry, trade, agriculture, tourism, in infrastructure development, in social services delivery, including health, education, and sports, in the responsible management of our natural resources, and in the progressive constitutional reforms to improve governance. In this regard, in this regard, it is worth noting that the Alliance has agreed unanimously to adopt the Great Transformational Plan of the Movement for Change as the Alliance's blueprint for Ghana's economic transformation. Number three, making private sector the real engine of growth and development. The development of the most powerful economies in the world has been anchored on and driven by a vibrant private sector, strongly supported by government. The private sector in Ghana, including micro, small and medium enterprises, must be the agents of the transformation of our economy. Four, building a united Ghana. The divisiveness in our body politic, driven by the duopoly of the two dominant parties, the NDC and the NPP, has been the major destabilizing factor for progress in Ghana. To overcome this, there's an urgent and critical need. There's an urgent and critical need for a new political system that will move Ghana beyond the global. This is the only way we can build a truly representative government, eliminate the current winner-takes-all syndrome, ensure the continuity of government projects, and avoid the arrogance associated with political power. To facilitate this process, Ghana will require a leader who is elected not on the basis of his or her association with a political party, but who is elected on his own merits and can build consensus among all Ghanaians irrespective of their political affiliation. This, this is the main rationale for electing an independent candidate as president of Ghana. <coughs> Five, putting young people and women at the center of our national development agenda. <coughs> Ghana, Ghana, Ghana has a young, Ghana has a young population with 73% of its population under the age of 35. We cannot, as a nation, reap the demo demographic dividend without focusing on the group that represents the future of our country. 
In a similar vein, women constitute over 50% of our population. They constitute the largest section of our farming and trading communities. And in many cases, they are the breadwinners in our households. Gender mainstreaming must therefore be a development imperative if we want to exploit the full potential of our female human resource. Number six, and last but not the least, inspiring a revolutionary change in the mindset and behavior of Ghanaians. The lack of progress in the development of our country could be, to a large extent, attributed to attitudes and behaviors that are not conducive to transformation. The indiscipline, the lack of respect for the rule of law, and the inordinate clamor for wealth is a cancer in our Ghanaian society. For Ghana to transform, we need first to transform our own mindsets. Fellow countrymen and women, these six considerations that I've outlined above constitute the driving force underpinning the establishment of the Alliance for Revolutionary Change. Individually and collectively, we as partners of the Alliance have been motivated by these considerations in our quest for political power. In coming together as a group, we have agreed to focus on factors that unite us rather than those that divide us. This, in my view, is what makes this Alliance not only a powerful force, but an enduring one. As citizens, as citizens, we owe it a moral obligation to generations preceding us who sacrificed to build this great nation and to our children and generations yet born to build a Ghana that works not just for those in political office or those who have access to politicians, but a Ghana that works for all Ghanaians. When, when politicians are voted into power, they are expected to empower the people rather than empowering and enriching themselves. I'm committed to leading an effort when voted as president to create a new political culture in our country that will guarantee equal opportunities for all. Ghana, Ghana remains the jewel of Africa, the oasis of peace and the shining star of our continent. Let us work together to leverage these positive characteristics and build a prosperous, united, and peaceful Ghana. Fellow countrymen and women, in conclusion, I invite you all to join hands with the Alliance for Revolutionary Change to usher in a new era of hope, opportunity, and progress in Ghana. Vote for Alan Chamatin as president in the general elections in the general elections in December 2024 in this country. Long live the alliance Long live Ghana, Ghana will rise again. May God, may God bless our homeland Ghana and make our nation great and strong. I thank you for our time. So no 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 happiness so no 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 no
And the CFA of the Cape is the leader of the union government. And today, he has agreed, he has accepted wholeheartedly to be a part of the Alliance for Revolutionary Change. A round of applause for Ambassador Odike. We have Mr. Harry, Harry Mayor Asante, the second vice chairman for PNC as well doing the signing and to be a witness and a key partner to this alliance. Thank you, Mr. Asante. The gender balance is working. Alliance for Revolutionary Change is giving opportunity to women and man so ever checker ever woman. And since Agostina Kuju, Ten Force Movement, and the inside a set that I say. Thank you. Hosey Adoye, 
when he's also here with us. The Honorable Alan Kotoko Mate is taking a photograph. Let me acknowledge you in the presence of Dr. Muhammad Masih, who is a teacher of the Kashmashi Yuna, and a personal assistant is also here with us this afternoon. And who are here, you see, Zerua is also here with us. You are duly acknowledged, sir. I'm happy to be here. Madhu is also here with us this afternoon. Sir, you must welcome. Muhammad Awala Ali is here with us this afternoon. You are duly acknowledged. Thank you for coming. And let me acknowledge Dr. Sabo Mina, who is here with us. And let me as well acknowledge Dr. Amor Hemen, who has gone to join us. Thank <laughs> you. 